Okay, so the first thing you want to do is have your scoreboard already created. I've got my Team 1, Team 2 buttons right here, and then the original scores of zeros for both teams. Now you'll notice there's no animation attached to these buttons, um, nothing special, and we're going to change that. What we want to do is create an animation so that when I take the mouse and click on the score, the top layer disappears, showing me the next layer, which will be the, a score increased by 100. So I'm going to select this, go to go up here to animations, custom animation, and then tell it you want it to exit by disappearing. It'll give you a demonstration. Leave this as starting when you click on it. We need to change something though. We want to go to timing and right here we're going to select triggers. What's going to trigger it to disappear? We want to start the effect when we click on the button itself. Now here, this part's tricky, but I'm going to show you a, a little hint. You'll notice my, my page has a bunch of boxes and all of these boxes I've grouped together individually. So I have, as you can see, a lot of different groups in here. So how do you know which one is this button right here, this box? If you'll look right here where you assign the animation, it tells you that that was group 374. So we're going to say to start the disappearing effect when we select group 374. And then we can go to view slideshow, test it, and sure enough it disappears. So now we want to copy this animation to the next one, but instead of instead of doing it each time we build a layer, if we'll wait till we finish building the entire score scoreboard for team one, we can just select it and drag it over here to team two and copy it. So actually I'm gonna delete this because I don't need it. I'm gonna create team two scoreboard by copying what I do for team one. Okay, so the next part is creating the next layer. So the nice thing about PowerPoint is it identifies a pattern when you copy a button, for instance. I'm calling this button because it has an animation on it. It's going to identify the pattern and create the same animation for any, any copies. So I'm going to take this and select it. I'm going to press Control C and then just select out in the open and then press control V. So now here's my next one but I want this to be a score of 100. Now even though it says 374 right here and it says 374 up here as well, you'll, when we test it we can see we can make sure that they don't disappear at the same time. So just ignore these numbers for right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to put it on top of the score of zero and then we're going to push it behind it. So right click and then send to back. And then you'll notice it disappears. So now we see the top layer which is zero. So let's test it and see if it works. Okay, so team one answers a hundred dollar question and we go up here, we're going to click on it, their score is now 100. Okay, let's say team one answers another hundred question, so we're going to click on it and this should disappear. Okay, now it goes blank because we've not created the rest of the scores, but you should see the general idea. So now what we're going to do is copy this for as many times as we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this over just a little so that I can get grab the 100. I'm going to control C, control V. I'm going to pull that out of, out of my way. Put this back over it. Okay, so now what I did was I just looked at all the if if one team were to get every single question right, which obviously is 
very highly unlikely, but you want to be able to have a PowerPoint for such scenarios so that you don't have that embarrassing moment in front of the group where you've created a scoreboard and that doesn't even go up to the highest possible score. So in this case, if, if one team were to get all of these questions right, it's going to be a score of 7,500. So we're going to have to take this button and count by hundreds all the way up to 7,500. Sounds like it's going to take forever, but once you realize the pattern, it's, it's not that bad. So the only tedious part is actually typing in each individual score by hundreds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to paste it just over, 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 over. And you'll notice right here, it's creating an animation for each individual one. So then you're going to go through, okay, so now here's the part where you've got to remember what the last button was that you sent to the back up here. So the last one was 100, so this one needs to be 200. And then you're going to take it and drag it to the top, and then always select send to back. You don't want to select send backward because then that's just going to put it right behind the zero. So when you go to play the slideshow, when you're clicking on the score, it's going to go 0, 200, 100 because we had it sent 100 to the back earlier. So each time you create a layer, you send that new layer to the very back. So that was 200, here's 300, move it up here, send it back and then the pattern continues. Oh, see? Now that one did not group together. So sometimes, if you'll notice when you see these double uh, selection boxes, that means that it's selecting the text and the box. You might want to click out in the open. Always just grab the box itself and it'll bring everything. So send it back. This needs to be 500. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, I'm going to stop at 1,000 points. Um, you should be able to get the idea. 700, 800, 900, 1,000. Oh, let's see. What happened? I'm back. I'm backtracking. Control Z. Oh, so when I select this happens a couple of times. When I selected 900 to go to the back, for some reason the computer didn't respond. So you might have to just be careful and pay attention. And see, it did it again. Uh, send back. Okay, so now we're going to put the thousand on top. All right. So we don't need these. Okay, so let's pretend like we went all the way to 7,500. Now, how do you get Team 2 scoreboard to do the same thing, but not disappear when you click on Team 1? Well, PowerPoint is very, very smart in recognizing patterns. So you're going to take your mouse while holding the left click down and select just this score. Don't come up here and select Team 1. You don't want that. You just want this right here. And then what you're going to do is, while holding the control button down, notice the mouse changed, you're going to drag a copy over here. And then now let's test it and see if it works. So view slideshow. All right, Team 1 got a 100-point question right. Let's say Team 2 answered a 200 point question, so you'll click here twice. Click slowly because there's no way to go backwards in the counting. 
So 100, 200. All right, team one got a 400 question point, 400 point question. So one, two, three, four. And then let's say team two got a 100. And there you go. So you'll just keep clicking on it, but remember to be careful because if you click too fast and overcount, there's no way to fix it without restarting the slideshow. And that's creating a scoreboard. You can do the same concept with a timer. You'll notice right here, all I did was I created the exact same type of layers, but counting down from 10. Um, same button, same font. I just created numbers 0 through 10. And then my trigger is the timer. I set the timer to be the trigger. Once I click on the timer in the slideshow, this right here will start animating by disappearing. Now the way you get that to work is you have to delay it by one second each time. So if you'll look right here under the what what is the nine second mark, notice it says delay one second after the previous animation. So the 10 will disappear and then the computer will count for one second and then make the 9 disappear. Everything though starts on the click of picture 8 which is the clock. So let me show you right here. So you'll click on the clock and there goes the countdown. And each time you've told the animation to delay for one second and then there's a chime, time's up. And that's how you create a countdown.